Hi everybody, David Mail here, and today I'm back with the part two for the K-means cluster analysis. This is the easiest part. The hardest part's already done. Part one, where you're determining the optimal number of clusters. As you can see here, this is the same graph we left with in part one, where we determined that four would be the optimum, the most optimal number of clusters for this data set. The data set we're using here again to show you is the TKD, TKD pardon me, sales region four uh, data set, which we showed in the previous uh, part one. And again, it's July data for um, the Kentucky versus or Kentucky Tennessee area of the country, where you have stores, sales, transactions, and units. So if we go back here, right here you can see I'm going to go straight in because I already know that four is the optimal number of clusters. So we're going to go right in here and we're going to run our k-means analysis. It's a very simple. Um, function so basically it's just k-means parentheses your original data set so we're not using the matrix data set that we used above okay in part one in part one we created this test one which is a matrix right here we're actually using what we brought in right here where we actually read in our data set this guy right there okay and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the columns that we want to use for the k-means analysis. In this case, I'm using sales and transactions. You can look at the data, which we just showed earlier, which shows you columns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so on. Okay, and you can pick those. And then this number right here next to it is the optimal number of clusters. Very simple. All you do is run this whole thing right here, dump it into a vector. In this case, we're using the vector clusters. And right here, you can see it's got a list of nine because we've already run it. Um, you can either run this str function on clusters or you can just click on your cluster set and it gives you the same thing and basically what this is going to do is going to tell you the sizes of your cluster so I picked four right so we got 13 and 1, 4 and 1, 18 and 1 and 9 in the other that's the size of our clusters you can look at the betweens the within SS numbers within some of squares numbers you can actually look at the actual cluster digits, some samples of them. So obviously you got ones, threes, you'll have twos and fours in there. Because you know you're going to have all of them because you got no zeros in this uh, sizes here. You can look at the centers, uh, the total sum of squares, whatever you want to look at there. You can get more uh, into it. You don't really have to at this point. Um, but that's basically what we're doing right here uh, with this line right here. Next, once you have that data, once we have the clusters, well, we need to be able to use them, right? So we want to put them into our data set. We need to append them to our data. So we're going to create a new row that's called, or a new, not new row, new column actually called clusters. And that's right here on our data frame because test data six of data frame is not a matrix. Remember, we brought that in from Excel. So what we're doing right here is we're doing as factor the function call of it and we're bringing in from this right here from this vector clusters we're bring, and it's a data frame again we're bringing this guy we're bringing in the cluster value and we're gonna append it to our data set as clusters so if I go to look at test data 6 now I can either click here or I can click here if it's not up there and I can look at that there it is look at that we've got our data as it was plus the cluster value you can see ones twos threes fours in there which is really neat because I can take that now and I can export this data to uh, Excel and do some graphing out there do some analysis out there but I can also do that in R so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna end this video with this because this is very simple here but we're gonna go into part three where we're gonna graph this so again you want to look at and make sure your data looks good. When you're done with this part here with creating the k-means analysis on the optimal number of columns or clusters, I'm sorry, what you want to do is you want to look at your data. So I could actually hit this. I can see it down below here if I bring this up. Let's bring that up here. And there's the same data I just showed you earlier. It shows the size, the breakdowns, 13, 4, 18, and 9. That's the, this is a small data set. 
okay but you could use this for a large data set it doesn't matter and it'll show you the number in this case because we got four clusters that we've done we've determined that's our optimal cluster number so it'll have it broken out into four pieces of data four groups one has size 13 4 18 and 9 okay and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this and we're gonna do a really cool way of graphing it and mapping it I'm gonna show you it against another variable sales but it could be anything I could show it against services against transactional data whatever it is basket size anything and I'm gonna show you how to put that on a cool map so you can see and develop new insights on your data that's just really cool and interesting and it'll really make your directors and your questers be really interested in your abilities and what you can do for them and the new things you can do through data science and data analysis so again this is part two of the k-means analysis and next is coming part three thanks for watching please subscribe and uh, like and be sure and check out the next part of this sec uh, series thank you